So today we're doing a spot and method feeder fishing at the beautiful Earlswood Lakes on the engine pool. It's virtually all F1s in here, ranging from a small one around a pound and a half up to four pound plus. And these fish are exceptionally fit. Um, we're having a great day here today. Zolt says the water's cold, but the fish are biting. And there we go, an Earlswood beauty. Lovely fish, they're all in pristine condition. Just get him out and show you. So that is pretty typical for an Earlswood F1. They've got massive fins on them. They're really fit fish. And they love abandoned wafter. It's a very dull overcast day and I think we are going to get some rain at some stage but the fishing is usually pretty good here in fact I would say once you once you start to catch a few you usually catch steady all day. Um, for those who've not familiar with the venue, it's 99% uh, F1s. I don't think I've ever caught anything but an F1 here, but there are the odd bream and the odd big carp in here, but most of the time it's F1s and it's just steady fishing. In the warmer months, they catch on the pole and in the uh, this time of year now, as it gets colder, they go a little bit further out, but normally I'd say 35 to 40 metres is good enough. That's all we'll fish today. I've got an 11 foot rod. Um, I am going to feed uh, a 15 to 20 metre line with a few pellets, 8 mil pellets, because um, if we have a good day, I expect to catch on that as well. There's one, there's a bite. Look, pulling the rod round. He swam towards me now, just pick up, and he's on. Some days you can come and you've got to, you've got to wait for the fish to come into your peg. But they will, if you're confident and you keep casting fairly regularly, at some stage they come into your peg. If you're lucky they'll settle down. Get the odd liner. Most bites they just pull the rod round. And it's uh, for pleasure fishing, it's a great place to come if you just want to get your rod bent. And trust me, they do bend your rod. For small fish, they fight ever so hard. They've got massive fins on them. And they just fight, fight so well. I'm using a large flatbed Mifford feeder today. It's really personal choice. You catch on whatever you choose to do. Be it a pellet feeder or a, ban a Banjo XR. You know, I'm sat here pleasure fishing today. So, I'm just using a large feeder, giving them a bit of bait. And, uh, it's working fine. In the winter time, I think it's important to use a stopwatch, but when the fishing's really good, you don't need to leave it in for long. You usually get a bite or a fish, indications of some description. With it being a big reservoir, it is prone to tow. It's a big open water. Um, there can be a few longer walks to the other side. But if you travel light, just bring a couple of feeder rods and the bare essentials, you can have a great day. And the bottom, 
just a sandy gravelly bottom everywhere on the reservoir it just shelves away really steadily there's no steep drop-offs or anything like that and so the further out you go generally the deeper it gets today I'm fishing about 35 meters and I estimate it's around five, maybe six foot deep. There's no need to fish too light. I usually fish an 019 hook length, either a 14 or sometimes even a 12. I'm just gonna put a new hook on one, on one feeder. I usually have two or three feeders made up. The rules are very relaxed here. You, can't, you are allowed to use elasticated method feeders. So given a choice, that's my preference. On a good day, it can be quite fast and furious, so you need to be in and out. And if you can have a feeder made up, ready to go, it's a big advantage some days. We're getting the odd indication and little tap. And I think that one's on. Yeah, that looks like a bite. But it's not, it was a liner, so it wasn't on. No bait on. So, you don't miss the odd bite and you, sometimes you get them and they pull the rod right round and you pick up and there's nothing there but most of the time they're incredibly positive bites. And it's great fishing. Um, You definitely need a rod rest that is going to rescue the rod or hold the rod in position. Sometimes the bites are incredibly vicious and uh, they do literally pull your rod off the rod rest sometimes. So you've got to be ready for them. You, and uh, my advice is when you come use a rod rest of some description that's going to grip your rod because they are proper vicious bites some days. That's a bite, look. Salt's just shaking his head. It's still early in the session and we've had about half a dozen fish and it's just steady away. One of the things it does tell you here as well is some days you can cast it in and they're literally, they're on the bait straight away. Um, you know, you hardly get a chance to pull the rod in the rod rest and to say it's still pretty cold and clear water, the fish absolutely nail the bait straight away. It's amazing how quickly they can they can take the bait, especially when you think that it's buried in the middle of a method ball. They soon attack it and find the up bait. It's one of the smaller ones today. Um, it never really matters what what hook bait you use. I just prefer wafters. The easy, convenient pellets is just as good some days. Just pays to be fairly busy. And the fishing is often as easy as you want to make it. So we're not making it complicated today, just a nice steady lob. Hit the clip. I always fish to a clip on here. Just even in winter, I tend to like to fish down one hole. Once the fish arrive, they usually usually stay put. It's not very often you have to move move further out, and that's what I mean about how quick you can get a bite. There's a couple of different batches of fish in here. There's the smaller ones, which are like a pound and a half to two pound. And I'd say 
you know, there is the odd bigger one that goes five, six pound. Most of them, I'd say, I'll average two to two and a half pound. This is only a small one, but they fight incredibly hard. Yeah, I'm just using a large 30 gram flatbed method feeder. 019 up length power line. The reflow power. It's my favourite up length line. Caught so many fish using it over the years. I'm very confident with it. Today's proving to so successful that I've hardly got time to make another feeder up before before the rod's gone round. So pick yourself a far bank marker. Just give it a cast just slightly more so you always comfortably hit the clip. You don't want to be hitting the clip dead hard but you just need to be comfortably hitting it. Get the rod in the rod rest sink the line today the the toes against the wind so it's making for pretty comfortable fishing really and i'm just i've got one eye one eye on my rod tip while i'm making another feeder up It's a bit of a dull, dank day, but the fish are biting, so that's all that matters. There's one look, he's on. See him pulling the rod round. I'm using the new Superior X today in 11 foot. Absolutely superb. <laughs> Lovely soft rod. Perfect for these hard fighting F1s. And trust me, they do fight hard. So this is just a small one. Got oh, your steady fishing. I say small, he's probably close to two pound that one. He's nicked me wafter off as well. It's in the landing net, so I'll go again. Just pop it back on me. Uh, when it comes to wafter fishing, I'm a massive fan of bayonets. I honestly believe that you can't get a true presentation of a wafter unless you use a bayonet. Bands are good for pellets and sinking, sinking bandoms. But when it comes to a proper, critically balanced wafter, you've got to use a bayonet. It's as simple as that. Quite often use the pre-tide, using them today. Got an, uh, a size 12 MCM. So I'm just letting the line sink. Put the rod in the rod rest. As the line sinks and the toe, it catches up with the toe. Just gives a nice little tension on the tip. Like it pretty slack as a rule. Um, and you do get quite a few liners and the odd... Uh, some of them can be quite big liners some days, but it's always a good sign. It shows that there's plenty of fish about. And usually they're not long before whatever line you, you pick 
They usually find the bait pretty quickly, the fish. So, like I say, I'm pleasure fishing today, so I've chosen to use a big feeder, put plenty of bait in, and uh, we're starting to catch nice and steady now. Get a quite a few line as an odd indication now, and I'm, I'm just leaving it till the uh, till the rod just pulls round properly. It's just beginning pulling round now. I'm pretty sure he's on, but I'll leave it a bit longer. Yeah, he's on. It really is a great venue, and for anybody who lives nearby. I definitely recommend it. You know, I fished it in the depths of winter last year when it had when the lake was half frozen, and it still fishes well. Um, and I think it's about nearly a fortnight since I last fished it, and the uh, Yeah, the water's risen about 18 inch, so it's beginning to fill up nicely now. Another couple of weeks and it won't be far off its normal level, I think. I was a little bit worried today that with all this cold water coming in and the level rising that the fish might not feed. But I should have known better. It's not very often I've been here when they don't feed. Some days you come and in a match situation you have to be a little bit patient. Sometimes it can take a while to find your bait. But at the moment I think it's fair to say that they're uh, finding it pretty quickly. I've not even got a chance to make another feeder up. Yeah, it really is a dull day. Luckily, at the moment, the rain is just about holding off. But we could get a downpour at any minute. I'm really impressed with this new rod. You know, you don't need a big, a big, uh, heavy rod for this sort of fishing. You're not casting too far. And I personally think you want something that absorbs the lunges of these fish because like I say they fight incredibly hard for the size and there's certainly no mistaking a bite when you get one it's just lovely easy fishing today I'm using a the new Superior X in 11 foot and uh, the action on them is sublime they cast like a dream They've got minimina gains on them. The line flows through the rings, dead easy. And I actually think you can get a little bit extra distance with these rods, with these rings. And that, he's still trying to beat me up in the net. He's a beautiful Earlswood F1. Perfect. Pop him in the net. So we're fishing about 35 metres today, just a nice steady lob. Uh, it's a cold, windy day, very dull as you can see. very shallow out there I think it's only about five foot the water's quite clear and cold we've had quite a bit of rain in the last week and I fished here about a fortnight ago and 
I think the water's come up around 18 inches and most of that would have been in the last two or three days, but it's certainly not putting the fish off. Um, I've been here on the coldest days in winter when part of the lakes had ice on it and still managed to catch well. And it's turning into quite a nice day really, despite it being a bit cold. Getting plenty of liners, plenty of signs. And just wait for the rod tip to go round. It's one thing for sure here at Earlswood, there's no shy bites. When you get a bite, you certainly know about it. A couple of weeks ago when it was a bit warmer, the were catching on the pole. But I think it's gone a little bit colder today. We may catch may well catch some on a shorter rod a little bit later. But for the time being. We're just plodding away here. At this time of year as well, I'm a massive fan of using a stopwatch, especially in my matches. Um, they tell you an awful lot. Um, you always find that there's a pattern, there's a rule, um, in terms of bite times. and it keeps you regimented even when you're not catching it forces you to cast in you know you can see you've had your rod in for 10 minutes you can wind it in and cast back out on this venue it is important to keep casting fairly frequently obviously on the colder days you have to wait a little bit longer but on a good day you get bites pretty quickly yeah, in the colder months as well, I also think it's important to squeeze your method quite hard. The longer you're waiting for a bite, the harder you can squeeze it. Because if you squeeze it hard, you're 100% confident that it hits the bottom intact. And then in the, cold, in the colder weather, it does take a little bit longer to break down but by squeezing it hard you know when it's really cold some days you've got to wait at least te at least 10 minutes for a bite but so you can squeeze it hard but still be confident that it lands properly it sinks correctly and it breaks it doesn't break up mid water you don't get any pellets coming off it it sinks to the bottom i've moved on to the 10 foot superior x now just to give that a go on this shorter line. It might be a little bit ambitious today, but we'll see if we can catch some on this. fishing about 15 to 20 meters out on the short line just had a line bite straight away just loose feeding a few pellets not loads well there's a bite on the short line Taking a bit of line off the clutch. Even the coot's getting in on the action. <sighs> Try to avoid the cameraman, which is proving a bit difficult at the moment because the fish are going mad. There we go.
slightly better one. Yeah, he's a beauty, this one. Absolute beauty. He's going mad in the night. He's still trying to beat me up. Take the hook out. There we go. Pop him in the net. I think we'll have another go on the short line. You can squeeze it hard in winter. Because when you go to places like like, um, you know, the extreme, Boddington, places like that, where you've got to cast an exceptionally long way some days, it pays to squeeze it hard because you're having to wait, like, in extreme cases, like, half an hour or longer for bites. So this 10-foot rod... Slightly softer action, but perfect for this short line. It's only a small fish. Let's take my time with it. There we go. He's in the net. We've had quite a few smaller, other smaller ones today. But well, they're still quality fish. And they're all in pristine condition. There we go. Chuck it out again, see if we can catch another. I mean, when you think it's probably only about two and a half, three foot out there, and how cold it is. There's a bite. You. Yes, I'm well impressed with this new Superior X rod. I think we're going to call this the last fish of the day. We've had an absolutely fantastic session at Earlswood Lakes on the engine pool. We've caught fish steady all day on simple method tactics. Thin perfect two mils and the wafters. Give it a try guys, this is a great venue. So if you want to see more on the Preston Innovations YouTube channel, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos by the other consultants.